Thank you, Una. I want to um, thank you all for attending today. This is um, the third in a series of webinars we've done this fall on open educational resources. Our first one took a look at OERs in higher ed and some of the activities going on. Our second one last month focused on open textbooks. And um, we actually have that up on our website. We didn't finish our entire discussion, so we're hoping to set up another webinar uh, a little later on to actually take a look at more of the concerns and perhaps barriers to adoption of open textbooks. But today we're focused on what I think is rather unique, and that is open educational resources for the area of workforce development. Una Daly is the executive director for the um, Community College Consortium for Open Educational Resources. Uh, and she has graciously offered to do these webinars for us. And so uh, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Una to begin our discussion today. Thank you very much, Rhonda. I'm very pleased to be here um, in our, at our third webinar. And um, I'm just going to go through a little bit of housekeeping and, uh, and we'll get started. So um, for those of you who haven't joined us before on the Collaborate system, um, on the left-hand side of your uh, screen you should see an audio and video um, control area. If you're on the phone, you can click on the phone icon. It looks like right now nobody's on the phone, but if you're on the on the phone, you can click on the phone icon up at the top next to the audio and video text. What that does is it turns off your speaker and your mic on your um, computer. So um, right now everything sounds perfect, but um, if that was an issue. Um, when you get down to the next layer, you'll see a list of participants. And right now I can see um, that we have about six participants on. Um, so welcome to all of you. And I see Glen, Glen Oaks Community College is um, participating as a, as a college. So there might be a, a, a few of you there. And that's wonderful. Um, and finally, the, the chat window appears underneath. And if you are not on the phone, then you probably will be um, chatting with us through the window. So please feel free to use that chat window for comments, questions as we go along. And I see that Patty has already um, uh, posted a comment there. And she said she's interested on behalf of our Workforce Development Office. They currently use Amatrol modules for machine technology and electrical instruction. Okay, wonderful. I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad uh, you came today, Patty. And um, I'll be talking uh, more about what's happening um, out there um, with, some, with some specific case studies that hopefully will be helpful for you. So um, um, Rhonda very kindly introduced me. Um, and now um, I'd love to hear a little bit more about um, those of you who are out there uh, today um, listening in. Um, and I'm going to just um, go through the uh, participants window um, uh, alphabetically and ask you to either type in the chat window if, um, if you're not on a phone or a microphone um, and just let us know um, what your interest might be. So I'm going to start with Glen Oaks Community College and I know there may be multiple ones, multiple folks there. Um, if you can type in our chat window and let us know if there's a specific area of interest for OER. Um, or, or if you can speak by clicking on the talk um, button if you have a microphone. Looks like they're typing in the chat window. So uh, while Glen Oaks is doing that, I'm going to go next to Caleb. And uh, Caleb, uh, please introduce yourself if you can and uh, let us know uh, what your interest is in OER uh, for workforce development. All right, Caleb is typing. Um, Glen Oaks Community said there's three of uh, there's three today representing the workforce development. That's Pat, who's faculty, and Kevin, and support staff Amy. Okay, wonderful. 
Um, if there's a specific area of workforce development um, that you're focused on, that would also uh, be interesting for us to know. So thank you for typing that in. And um, all right, so um, Caleb is from OCC, and I, sorry, I wish I knew what your abbreviations were. Uh, Oakland, thank you, Oakland Community College, wonderful. And you're here for general reference. Okay, super. Um, and and this this is a good overview session, so I think you'll get some valuable information here. All right, and Patty um, already introduced herself. And oh, okay, and they're they're looking to cheap for cheaper alternatives to the modules that will integrate with our LMS. All right, wonderful. Um, and okay, and Glen Oaks is interested in resources for occupational programs. Okay, wonderful. And let's see, uh, Rhonda, I think is uh, here as our uh, as as the director of the program. Um, so, uh, Rhonda, you're welcome to to jump in as well if you'd like. Otherwise, I'll ask Tricia if she would share um, what she's for around OER? We're here, um, the program coordinators and director of workforce development from Henry Ford Communication or Community College is on the line. We are interested in additional resources for occupational programs as it were references workforce, but also possibly even for our credit side of the house. Okay, okay, great. Well, welcome. And we are going to talk about some programs. Um, now, um, as, as Rhonda mentioned, this is the, the third webinar, um, but I'm going to go over a few details about what open resources are once again. And I'll go over those pretty quickly, but I think a couple of you, I'm not sure, have maybe a show of hands. Um, who's been here before? Um, up at the top, there's you could, um, up under the participants list, yeah, Patty, I know, has been here before. Um, Rhonda, of course, and Glenn. Um, how about Caleb and Tricia? Um, have you also attended one of these webinars before? For HFCC. And you have attended before? HFCC has not attended before. Okay. All right. Great. So I will go over the introductory slides, but I won't go too fast. And Caleb has been before, but okay. It, it's always a good review um, of um, kind of. I just uh, want you to understand the difference between public domain and, and um, open educational resources and, and, um, and free resources out on the Internet. So there are some differences. So that's why we go through the overview each time. Now once again, the Community College Consortium for Open Educational Resources, um, our mission is promoting adoption of OER to enhance teaching and learning. And we're um, really thrilled that uh, Michigan is now part of our consortium. Um, we, you know, our focus is expanding access to education, and we do that through supporting faculty development, which is um, part of what we're what we're doing today here. We also do face to face upon request, and um, we meet at conferences, do presentations and workshops, and collaborate with uh, members of our consortium uh, that way as well, in addition. Um, and although we work with four-year colleges and universities, that's obviously an important piece of, uh, of our work at the community colleges, we remain um, very steadfast to the community college mission because we feel that uh, we need to focus on the needs of community colleges um, specifically. And here's, here's our map once again, and, and there's our um, map for Michigan. Um, and we are now at 240 plus community colleges, community and technical colleges that participate either as individual members or as regional um, consortium members, which uh, Michigan is a regional consortium member. And we're very pleased about that. All right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to once again do my little true and false game for uh, those of you who have attended before where you get to uh, choose uh, whether the statement I make is true or false. Uh, I'm going to go through those definitions pretty quickly. But I'm going to talk to you about uh, the government role in workforce education. And I know for those of you who are in uh, workforce education, um, you're probably quite aware of this role. Um, I'm going to identify some resources that you may or may not be aware of um, that might be available for you to use. And then we're going to talk about three case studies. Um, where OER is being used for workforce development. 
And then finally, generally we're going to talk about adapting OER for the workforce and why open, openly licensed materials um, provides a lot of flexibility for you as faculty and educators. Any questions before we jump in? Alrighty. So, once again, um, are open educational resources the same as public domain? So, is that tr is OER equal to public domain? And if you can, you can check yes or no by uh, using the little um, check boxes or the hands up at the top. All right. So I have three no's and uh, okay, four no's. <laughs> Wonderful. So you're you're absolutely right. Open educational resources do include those resources that are in public domain, but they also include resources that have been openly licensed um, and often are more up to date than some of the public domain resources which have simply their copyright expired. Um, next question. There is little OER for workforce development available currently. Uh, let me, sorry, let me clear that last one. And is that true or false? There is little OER for workforce development. Well, okay, and I've got okay, I've got two no's, um, and and I would tend to agree. There there is um, actually more and more open educational resources for workforce development, and um, the um, Department of Labor has been really helping out with that um, over the last three years with the TACT grants, which we which will be we'll talk about as a case study um, coming up. Um, so there is more and more. OER uh, for workforce development I think will get more interesting as we go along. It's been quite interesting in developing countries where uh, resources, of course, where money is even more um, tightly constrained and, and so that a lot of the projects uh, overseas have actually, and I should say overseas in developing countries, have been very interested in open educational resources. And I think we're going to see more and more of that um, domestically as well. And finally, corporations have no interest in OER for training. So we're talking about our private companies here. Um, and I'm getting um, okay. So, so good. We got um, we got. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry we don't have a maybe for some of these. Um, so it was so Patty, you um, you uh, disagreed. You say corporation or you said corporations have no interest in OER for training. Did you want to share what your thoughts were on that? Patty's typing away here. Um, Corporations are starting to develop some interest in OER, and not in, and not in all sectors. Um, we're seeing some ed tech startups. Uh, uh, sorry, Patty, if you have a microphone, you can also speak. Okay, so Patty says they probably don't know about OER, and you're right. It is um, corporations are less aware of OER, um, open educational resources. Um, but some of the new ed tech startups um, are starting to look at OER as ways to train potential employees to come in to businesses uh, prior to actually filling out an application for the company. So, um, and there's a couple of examples of that. One of one of those companies, which is in California, um, and I think as companies see OER as a way to save money, I see I think we'll see more use of OER in corporate training. So thanks, thanks for playing the game with me. And um, as always, you guys did great. Um, so once again, going back to our definitions, so open educational resources are teaching, learning, and research resources that reside in the public domain or have been licensed under an intellectual uh, property, uh, sorry, released under an intellectual property, property license that permits their free use or repurposing. And of course, that's a very general definition. Um, and so more specifically, that could be a, an open textbook. It could be an open course. 
Um, it could be videos, uh, really any tool materials that can be used to support access. And I want to go over just briefly again what an open license is because this is um, somewhat um, complex on the first time you look at it. So if you if you can see that picture at the bottom of the screen, you see a copyright symbol on the far right, you see a Creative Commons, which is what we call the open license in the middle, and you see public domain on the far right. So Creative Commons, um, a Creative Commons license allows um, a copyright holder to release a version that may be reused um, without asking permission. So normally a copyrighted piece of uh, work, you must receive permission in order to reuse it, copy it, um, distribute it, revise it. With Creative Commons, the license tells you as a user how you can use that um, material um, without having to ask permission. Public domain on the other hand is where something has been given away uh, and, and the owner or the author no longer retains any rights to it. So Creative Commons, the author or owner still retains rights but, but is allowing others to share it. And there's a couple of conditions that you should be aware of with the Creative Commons license. Um, if you look at the pictures here on this screen, hopefully you can see those, you'll, you'll see there's uh, the Creative Commons uh, license which you identify uh, or you will see in a, in a work. Uh, the one required condition is the attribute. Uh, condition on the license and that is um, visualized by a little person and what it means is you need to give credit to the original author. And then the last two conditions here, uh, the dollar sign one and the, and the, and the upside down arrow are um, optional. And the, the one with the dollar sign, is what we call the non-commercial one, is if somebody specifies that on their license then they say you can reuse this material but you may not reuse it um, for sale. So you may not make a profit on it. And uh, many folks do choose to use that uh, condition. Um, for, and there's reasons too, and you know, pro and con against that. Um, and then the last one is the share alike um, condition, which looks kind of like a, a, a curly upside down arrow. And what if somebody puts that condition on their Creative Commons license, it says you may reuse this, um, revise it, but you need to um, republish it with the exact same license as I used. And we generally. Um, recommend against that one because it's very it, it, it's restrictive in the sense that um, somebody has to republish exactly with the same license that the original author used and it makes remixing OER um, more more complex. Okay. So um, <laughs> there if you want more information, I recommend you go to the creativecommons.org site. They have lots of great information about how those licenses work and how you can apply them to your own materials. So, and of course, one of the big advantages to open educational resources, which brings many of us in education to them initially, is the cost savings. And here we have an example of an introductory statistics book, which um, this is. Um, out here in California, it's our Math 10 course, and um, if this if the student has to purchase it on um, Amazon, um, the hardcover book is $142. Um, a Kindle version is $59. The openly licensed one, and as you can see, that this the collaborative statistics. It's the red textbook on your right hand side. It's published by the Connections OER repository. Um, it has a Creative Commons buy or attribute license. It's available free online for the student to use either, uh, either uh, through the web interface or downloading a PDF. And they can order a softbound copy for $26. So big cost savings um, for students. So uh, in talking about OER for workforce, um, the first place I think to go is the government resources. Um, generally, these resources are in the public domain um, because they've been built by 
taxpayer dollars, and, um, and so they are available to us for free to reuse. Um, when you go on their site, um, you will see that sometimes, um, for instance, their logos and so forth are not allowed. You cannot reuse those without permission. But generally all of the resources, particularly the educational resources, are up there and meant to be reused by you. So I, I just put a couple here that um, I think uh, would be of interest, and they're um, primarily, of course, in the STEM field, and in, um, but workforce related. And specifically, I'm going to talk about the Department of Energy and the Department of Labor. And I wonder how many folks out there have used these resources, resources before. So the Department of Energy um, has a uh, site called the Energy Education and Workforce Development area. And it's all about um, jobs and career planning. Uh, within energy and in fact it has lesson plans and activities which are focused on K through 12 but of course could be adapted for a community college classroom. And um, I wonder if have, have, has anyone on the line uh, used those before? Okay. Oh, thank you for okay for the check boxes. Okay, wonderful. So it sounds like no. So I would highly recommend you take a look at those. Um, there's um, some 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 great materials as a starting point for um, things you can bring into the classroom for free, and they are all public domain. Um, and the other one that I'm going to mention today is the Department of Labor, and um, I know that. Uh, Many of you have heard of the Department of Labor um, tax grant programs. Um, but specifically, um, the Department of Labor has a, um, a site called Employment and Training Administration. And there they have a lot of uh, best practices, career pathway information um, that could be used by both educators and obviously job seekers. Um, but probably the biggest program that has come out of the Department of Labor in the last three years is the tax grant. And actually, I'm not sure if that's the biggest. The Department of Labor has amazing workforce grants, but it is, from an open perspective, it is the, it is the biggest one. Um, how many of you have heard of the tax grants? Okay, Rhonda has. Yes, and Glen Oaks, they have. Okay, wonderful. Um, so um, for those of you who may not be familiar with um, them, the Department of Labor and the Department of Education collaborated together to create these training assistance adjustment community college career training grants. And starting in 2011, uh, they gave away uh, through a grant program um, that was focused on regional workforce development. They gave away $500 million. And they have done that for the succeeding two years. Um, and the final year will be 2014. And at that point, they will have reached $2 billion. Um, all, and there it's focused um, on health, um, energy, uh, engineering, um, And there's also there's also other areas. Um, I have not worked specifically with it. Uh, manufacturing is another big one. Um, I don't have the list, but every state in the union has been affected by these grants. Um, and um, the very exciting um, piece of news about them from an open education perspective is that all of the materials that are created new as part of this grant. Um, must be licensed with a, a Creative Commons attribution or a, what we call a CC BY license, which means that um, they will be available for other colleges to reuse. Um, and so that's, um, yes, thank you. Um, Rhonda mentioned automotive manufacturing <laughs> and how. Um, hmm. Well, I'm not sure if I understand the question on how, but. Um, Go ahead and give me some more information there. Um, so, so now that um, we've looked at um, a couple of the government resources um, and talked about TACT, I'd like to ask once again: Has anyone um, has, has anyone used an open educational resource either from a public domain site um, or um, 
such as a government site or, or from just a general open education repository site in their classrooms. Okay, so Patty has. Wonderful, Patty. Um, and Patty, can you share um, what kind of a resource it was or where you got it from? Oh, okay. So Patty, all right, wonderful. So Patty's using my math labs. Okay. So Patty, are you a, a math uh, instructor then? You've been involved in my my open math, yes. And there's there's um, in fact the the my open math labs. Um, I think it's my open math labs. I, I can't remember exactly what it's called. Um, it was developed originally in Washington State, but it's used um, all over the country. And of course, Washington State is a member of our consortium. And we have folks um, in Washington State and also in Arizona who have presented on this topic before. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. And those those are wonderful resources and very very um, popular with math faculty. And those who have created them and used them are extremely enthusiastic and um, really love to help other math faculty who want to use them. So if if you need contacts within the math the open math community, please let me know. Um, and Rhonda asked a good question here earlier. She asked, how do we find those materials from the tax grants? So that Rhonda is actually an ongoing question. Um, at the end of the grant period, um, all of these resources um, will be re uh, they will be given to the Department of um, Labor. The Department of Labor needs to create a repository, and they have about nine months to do it because the first ones were the first uh, grants went out in 2011, and they will finish in 2014. And they will be releasing all of their materials at that time under an open license. Um, and um, the Department of Labor says they're working on it. In, um, so, <laughs> sorry for that answer. Some of the uh, projects have started to release por por portions of it, and I'm actually going to talk about the National STEM Consortium in a few minutes, and I'll tell you about um, some of the uh, course materials they've released so far. Okay, so the case studies I'm going to go through is I'm going to talk to you about um, some open textbooks that have been developed um, at the colleges um, for specifically focused on workforce. Um, I'm going to talk to you about a private foundation, Sailor, which um, I've talked for those of you who've been on these before. Um, Sailor.org uh, does free education courses. They started out doing college courses um, so that a student could. Um, essentially educate themselves online for free. And over time, uh, Sailor has branched out into some other areas. Um, they, are, they currently work with um, ACE and Learning Counts so that students can develop portfolios based on the courses that they um, take at Sailor. And those portfolios can be used for credit to obtain credit um, at institutions that participate in portfolio assessment uh, for credit. And finally, I'm going to talk about the National STEM Consortium, which is one of the big TACT grants that was one of the wave one, as we call it, uh, grantees. Um, and, and they're a very interesting example of, uh, of um, 10 colleges in nine states. Um, that that has already started to release some of their materials. All right. So starting with a, the smallest example here is College of the Canyons, which is in Southern California, um, has two um, faculty within their water department. Um, that's Mike Albert and Regina Blasberg, and they have developed two um, open textbooks uh, for what they call Waterworks Mathematics. And, and as you can see, the title here is an introductory review of mathematical principles for water distribution operators and water treatment operators. So very focused on 
workforce, uh, you know, for jobs um, out there um, in industry. And so the textbooks were developed by um, the faculty um, to address regional water certification programs in California. Um, and you know, if you talk with Regina, who's a, Regina Blasberg, one of the co-authors there, she's the department head, and she says the existing textbooks were not any good, and they really ended up finding they had to write one. And so this is all about the math behind water distribution and treatment. So they take um, math problems, and these are not, um, it's not calculus, it's definitely uh, pre-calculus, a lot of it's algebra and that kind of thing, but it's been contextualized for water management. And um, it addresses the needs within California around water management, but for those in other states that obviously will have different kind of state certification programs, um, because it has that open license, uh, those, mater those materials can be taken and revised um, to meet the needs um, within, your, um, within your region. So once again, the, um, the open textbook uh, provides that capability to um, contextualize for your student population. And it may be that your student population has been away from education for a long period of time, um, or there may be needs around translation. Uh, perhaps your students are coming in with um, English skills that are um, pre-college level, and um, you can address that in these open educational resources. Now moving to um, a larger program, um, as I mentioned earlier, the Sailor Foundation is a private foundation that is all about providing education for free um, to advance students' lives. And um, they worked um, on the Clinton Global Initiative a couple of years ago, um, and their proposal was around professional development courses. They also do courses on engineering and so forth, but this specific focus was professional development, and they, and they divided it into three areas, workplace skills, job search, and career advancement. And their audience, um, when they when they pitched this at the global Clinton, sorry the Clinton Global Initiative, um, I think it was about two summers ago, uh, they pitched it uh, for at-risk youth um, who needed to get up to speed um, as they were entering the job market or attempting to. I, since that time, they've really they've uh, broadened it a little bit. Uh, that still remains um, a focus, but um, they also are looking at the adult. Um, learner um, perhaps who's been away from the job market for a long time and needs to update their skills. So same set of materials work, uh, work well for both audiences. So the workplace skills, they have com uh, computer skills and literacy, professional writing, so this is really basically business writing, uh, word processing, so there's a course uh, on Microsoft Office 10. There's a course on how to use spreadsheets, and then um, a course on time and stress management. So very basic workplace skills um, for um, folks who are who probably haven't been in the job market in a while, or maybe are brand new. Um, job search skills. So this is helping. Um, uh, first time, or it might be uh, simply people who are changing careers, um, finding new jobs. So writing that resume, how do you go out and, and how do you apply online for jobs, interviewing skills, and, and professional etiquette. So how do you present yourself when you, uh, if you're going to a face-to-face -face interview? All of those kind of things um, in this other um, Section. And so those are four separate courses. And finally, um, they started developing more advanced um, career courses, um, which um, are focused on uh, specific areas such as customer service or accounting, introduction to management, payroll, um, information management, HTML and, and um, cascading style sheets, human resources, and then crisis communication. So once again, all of these materials are available with an open license. You can take these materials and incorporate them into your own courses, or you can simply point your students at them if you want to provide them as supplementary 
uh, resources for your students, you can do that as well. And um, Sailor is looking um, for their next phase to develop certificates around these uh, where they would combine those different courses into um, a program such as a sales program or a customer service program um, or public relations social media. So um, you could also do that kind of thing yourself by, and, you, and of course you already have programs at your um, college that um, I'm sure are focused on areas like this and you can certainly pick and choose from Sailor um, for materials that you would find useful. Um, and once again, they're at sailor.org, so quite easy to find and um, very helpful folks. Um, now, my final case study is the National STEM Consortium. And um, as I mentioned, it's 10 colleges in nine states. And um, there is a college from Michigan, which is Macomb Community College. Um, and I, I don't think we have anybody from Macomb today, but um, they are part of this, uh, this large consortium. And once again, th this was, uh, it's focused on STEM, which is of course um, science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, and the focus is what mid-skilled mid jobs in this, in this area. Um, and it's, and it has been funded through the TACT grant, which is the Training Assistance Adjustment Grants. Um, so I, I know uh, quite a few of you didn't, uh, weren't familiar with the TACT grants, and it really is this kind of um, consortium approach. Um, not only multiple colleges, but the workforce boards are, um, the regional workforce boards are involved, and also employers. Um, because the point is to get um, these students and these adults back to work um, as soon as possible. And there's, they have five uh, program certificate programs that they're in the process of developing. Um, and they're one-year programs with a cohort. And they've brought in a lot of learning science um, to help students um, get through the materials in a relatively short period of time. Um, and the areas, as you can see here, are composites. So that's all the different manufacturing materials, cyber technology, you know, with a real focus on security and um, other aspects of the cyber world, electrical vehicle technology, um, environmental technology, and then mechatronics. And um, I think it was Patty earlier um, who mentioned. Um, I'm going back and <laughs> the, uh, who mentioned the Amatrol. So, um, right. So, mechatronics is machine technology, but it's a combination of different um, of different pieces. Uh, it's it's mechanical engineering, and it's also some chemistry and um, some machining, um, all all wrapped into one. And I'm going to put the um, website um, for the National STEM because they already have a, a website which is great. <laughs> I'm forgetting what their website is. Uh, let me see. Make sure I get that correctly for you. Yeah, it's nationalstem.org is, um, is their website. And you can read all about it um, there, about those individual areas. Now, so far they, they um, they're, they've already they started the programs last January, and so they will have their students graduating, I think, this January. So they don't have any statistics yet on um, college, uh, sorry, placement. Yes, job placement. But you, we will be seeing some of that uh, coming out this spring. Um, and but what they do have posted, in addition to, of course, what's on their website is they have something called the STEM Bridge Course. And they're really quite um, pleased with this course. This is an overarching course to help students master basic reading and math competencies. But it has been contextualized for the STEM disciplines. And to implement this course, um, it was put on the open learning site at Carnegie Mellon. So Carnegie Mellon has had um, an open learning initiative site uh, for 
uh, about six or seven years now. It might be a little bit longer. I've been aware of it for six or seven years. And they, they post um, open courses up there in a variety of areas. And National STEM Consortium is taking advantage of that platform, uh, which does a lot of learning analytics. So as an instructor, if you have students taking courses up there, um, it allows you to, to view their progress um, on a very regular basis and um, help them be more successful. And so this STEM Bridge course is already available. It's been up since the summer. And I highly recommend you take a look at it if um, you're involved in science, technology, engineering, math areas uh, for workforce. So it's at oli.cmu.edu. I'll type that in here as well. And um, what you, you'll, when you come to that page, you'll see a whole list of, um, of courses. And so you just want to scroll down to the one that says STEM Bridge. And you'll be able to enter that freely. Um, it, it, it's open access. Any questions about that? Oh, and Patty says that they are developing a mechatronics program. Okay, wonderful. And Patty, remind me which college you're at. I know you told me. That's Shore Community College. All right. Are are you doing are you doing that, Patty, independently or as part of a consortium? Independently. Okay. You may want to touch base in with the folks um, in the consortium. Um, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> um, and I'd be happy to put you in contact with folks if you I don't know if Macomb is participating in the mechatronics. Um, the, co the colleges kind of chose which areas, which of the five areas they were working on. So and mechatronics is only one of those. Um, but if you need uh, contacts, um, both Rhonda and I know um, Jean Runyon, who is the she's the principal investigator from Anne Arundel, which is one of those colleges, and I'm sure they'd be very happy to put you in touch with the folks who are working on that. Maybe. So, um, you know, once again, I, I want to make the um, point that. Um, Open educational resources works very well for workforce, um, where often we have people coming in to our non-credit or our or our workforce programs um, who've been away from the academic world for a long time. Uh, their reading and math skills um, may not translate well. Their reading, writing, and math skills may not translate well into a college environment. Um, and so uh, an open license allows you to modify things to, so that your students can be more successful. Maybe you need to adjust a reading level uh, to use simpler words or less words um, and more pictures. You know, uh, depends on your student. Maybe you need to translate some of the materials um, if you have a large immigrant population. Um, specifically, we know from learning science that people tend to work better uh, sorry, they tend to learn better if um, the problems that they're solving are related to the applied area that they're trying to learn. And so we saw that with the water, the water mathematics coursework um, that I showed you earlier. All of those math problems around figuring out how to distribute and treat water are um, contextualized for the water industry. So um, the students are learning math, algebra, maybe a little bit more sophisticated, but algebra certainly, but within the context of how they're going to apply it in their job. And finally, changing cultural context. Um, you know, even within the country, we know that we have a lot of regional differences, certainly case studies uh, for California water, uh, where we generally have a lack of water are going to be quite different from, say, in Michigan where you have more water. <laughs> so you can change those, uh, those case studies so that they reflect your student population um, better. And, um, and then you can share it back with um, the uh, rest of the open education community. 
So that's that's kind of our little uh, our little feedback loop here is find, adapt, share. Um, and what that requires is that when you use open educational resources, uh, you're not required, but if you're going to republish them, uh, we suggest that you republish them with an open license so that others can find your materials, um, adapt them, and then share back. And, and that way the system is, is just richer and more productive. And that's really all I have for today. Um, once again, uh, this is my, uh, my boilerplate about um, the Community College Consortium and the different workshops and services and activities that we, um, that we provide. And um, our final um, webinar for the fall is next week on uh, Wednesday, December 11th. And um, it's California Community Colleges Share It Forward with the Creative Commons uh, by or attribution license. And um, just to give you a little bit of background about this, uh, the California Community College Chancellor's Office um, passed a policy in September uh, that all um, materials developed uh, under contract or by grant through their office must have a Creative Commons license on it. Um, now it's just rolling out, um, you know, just this this year, but um, all courses that are developed through through funding with the Chancellor's Office will um, have to be openly licensed. And so um, next Wednesday, um, we're going to have Cable Green um, from the Creative Commons um, organization. He's the director there of Global Learning. He's going to talk to us about why that's a very positive thing. We have Barbara Olowski from the Chancellor's Office who's going to talk about why they did it and how they made the case. And for those of you who might be policy wonks, you might want to pay attention to what Barbara has to say about that. And then finally we have Beth Smith talking and she's our Academic Senate President. And um, she's going to talk about um, how they're rolling this out with faculty and how it might change uh, faculty's role um, in terms of um, materials that they develop, so, and, and also the benefit to students of lower costs, which is the, the promise. All right. Um, well, I'm open for questions now, so I'm going to go over us. Uh, I'm going to go over here and look at the chat window, see if I missed anything. Thank you, Rhonda, for posting the STEM Bridge course uh, for everybody to take a look at. Wonderful. And Tricia asked, will your presentation be posted on NCCA's website? Um, if so, when? Um, so uh, the presentation will be uh, posted, uh, assuming this recording went well, which it looks like it's going uh, just fine. Um, it probably will not be available till middle of next week. So, um, but I, I make it available to Rhonda as soon as um, my folks um, can work on it, so I, I have a tech guy who works on it. Um, but I would say middle to end of next week it will be available. Um, we do have a collaborate version that is available earlier, but we generally like to um, convert these to YouTube, and those will be available at the end of next week. But Tricia, you're uh, welcome to contact me earlier if you if you if you need an earlier version. And as soon as I get those, I put them up on the website and I email all of those folks that registered um, so that you, you can get access to them. Thanks, Rhonda. That's great. And um, the, I did want to go ahead. I, just really briefly, I wanted to say that um, um, you can actually um, take away a copy of the slides today. And the way you do that is by using the File menu and you go to Save and you go to Whiteboard. And make sure when you go to Save Whiteboard that you save the PDF version of the Whiteboard. And then you can take a copy of these slides with you today. So if you do that before you exit the Collaborate system, you'll actually have the slides for today. And Go ahead, Rhonda. I was going to uh, mention that the um, TAC grant that have been awarded so far are just pretty much all over the board. But there is a big um, project going on and I think um, Roanoke 
a community college in um, North Carolina or South Carolina. Um, it is the lead on a big one that has to do with nursing. And um, they're doing a, a massive amount of work in um, the nursing field and in, in providing a lot of material in an open format. So I'm really interested from the standpoint of allied health and, and that area of, of seeing what they come up with. And just for everyone, um, knowledge, all of the TAT grant materials that are developed must be, I, I'm, I think I'm sure in saying this, they must be in um, a Creative Commons license so that the Department of Labor can put them up uh, in a repository for anybody to use. Is that correct, Una? That is correct. Um, all, all materials that are created under it. So in some cases, um, some commercial materials have been used in these programs, so, um, but a great deal of them are being developed. Right. Um, and all, the, all that is new development is required to be Creative Commons. And yeah, that's wonderful to hear about uh, Rolling Oaks, uh, the nursing program, um, certainly is an area that um, has, has needed um, open resources. Um, and there's a lot of, and I'm sorry I didn't mention earlier, there is a lot of health, um, allied health related uh, grants that have been given. Uh, there's a big one in Missouri. Uh, California has one uh, which is more physical therapy focused. But I, actually I do, I'm sorry, they have an LVN to RN nursing program as well. So there's, there is going to be a lot of materials available um, over the next couple of years. Right now. Um, I don't know. Has, do you know if Rolling Oaks has posted anything yet, uh, Rhonda? No, they no, not that I'm not that I'm aware of. They just received that grant. Like oh, okay, so. okay. So the National STEM is they received theirs in 2011, and they started right. posting this summer. So it's still fairly early, but I'm I'm looking forward to seeing that. That's going to be I think it's going to be good. Um, so can I answer any other questions for folks? But you, if you, um, if questions occur to you after the fact, um, you have my email there, and I hope to see uh, those of you who are available next Wednesday come and hear about how California is going to implement that um, on a statewide basis, the Creative Commons licensing. Um, Oh, well, and thank you, Patty, and thank you all for coming uh, this morning. It was my pleasure to present, and I think at this point uh, we'll um, we'll turn off the recorder, and I'll be here until 10 o'clock. Uh, sorry, 1 p.m. your time, I think. Or <laughs> are you on Central? We're on Eastern, so it would be 1 p.m. But thank okay. you, Una, again for sharing um, all of this information with us, and thank you all for participating. Um, look for an email from me early next week or mid next week with the link to the archived webinar. All right. Thanks everyone. Bye.